The aim was to try and develop a new treatment for children with severe immune deficiencies. Um, we wanted, we knew that these children were very sick, they really had very few treatment options and what we were able to offer them at that time uh, was a bone marrow transplant. Now that's very successful, but in fact when you can't find a good donor then uh, it can be very problematic and we lose children. So the, what we wanted to do uh, was develop a new form of therapy which was uh, gene therapy. Children with uh, severe immune deficiencies uh, are born without uh, white cells in their blood. So these are the cells that uh, fight infection and for us with normal immune systems we can fight coughs and colds. Uh, but for these children they don't have these white cells, they don't have an immune system and even the most common coughs and colds can be fatal for them. So these children usually uh, die in the first year of life. Uh, they were termed bubble babies in the past because they were actually kept in bubbles, uh, plastic bubbles, to stop them from fight, getting these infections. And so what we uh, have done, uh, and other groups around the world as well, is to develop a new way of treating uh, those children. We know what the missing gene is, the defective gene that gives rise to the disease, and what we do is make a working copy of that gene in the laboratory and introduce that gene into their bone marrow cells which now means that those bone marrow cells have the right signal and the right information to then build a new immune system. So now these children have normal numbers of white cells uh, in their blood as a result of that gene therapy procedure and they're able to fight infections and live uh, a normal life. Over the last um, 10 years we've been able to take that technology that we've developed in the laboratory uh, into treating patients and we're now able to cure uh, three different immune deficiencies as a result uh, of that gene therapy procedure. So that's uh, been incredibly satisfying that we've been able to develop that technology in the laboratory and it started off with the uh, research fellowship that I had and then translated into treatments uh, for children. So I think the greatest impact is that we're actually now being able to offer a new, uh, hopefully safer and effective uh, therapy uh, for children with these very severe uh, problems. So we treated our first patient in, uh, in 2003. Uh, this was a, a little boy who'd come from Africa. He had this terrible genetic disease and was diagnosed just in a few months of, um, uh, of age. It was a tiny, scrawny uh, little thing and um, really very, very poorly. And so we were able to diagnose this condition. We treated him uh, and protected him and uh, put him on some enzyme replacement therapy, which really didn't improve his immune system, but just kept him going until we could offer something else. And so at the age of three, his immune system wasn't really developing at all. Uh, and uh, so he became the first child that we treated uh, with gene therapy for this ADA uh, deficiency, as it's called. Uh, he's now eight and a half years after that uh, treatment and is, uh, is, it's fantastic to see him. He's a big strapping uh, boy, he's uh, at school um, uh, nearby here in, in London he, and he really isn't protected in any way whatsoever so he is uh, leading a completely full and uh, normal life and it's an absolute pleasure to see him uh, now eight and a half years after his treatment. So the research training fellowships, uh, well for me it has been uh, extremely important in starting my uh, academic career. Uh, I wanted uh, to be able to do research, I wanted to be able to uh, get into the laboratory and undertake a PhD so I could know about uh, molecular biology, about the technologies of uh, gene therapy. And so it's absolutely crucial that I had that time, that research fellowship of three years, uh, to be able to learn uh, those skills and then to take them into patients uh, after, uh, after that time and to continue on an academic and clinical uh, career. So it really was the, uh, the foundation and the first steps to establishing my uh, clinical and academic career. I think in general, uh, research training fellowships are extremely important. We are dealing 
with all kinds of problems in, uh, in clinical medicine, not just in pediatrics, where we need to understand uh, the, the, the basis of disease, the genetic base of disease, how disease comes about, how we can uh, develop new treatments to, to cure and improve the lives uh, of our patients. Now we can only do that by, by research. We can only do that by understanding those mechanisms, by developing uh, new technologies, and that involves and requires clinicians to go into the laboratory to learn uh, basic uh, scientific skills and then to be able to use that uh, to treat patients. Research is crucial uh, to improve the lives of uh, babies uh, and children. We see a deal here at Great Ormond Street and elsewhere uh, through the UK with some very severe diseases that have huge impacts on the lives of children uh, and their families. If we want to be able to offer the best diagnosis and offer the best treatments uh, for these uh, children and their families, then we need to be able to do the best possible uh, research. Uh, we need to get clinicians uh, and scientists to be working on these problems. We need clinicians to do uh, training in the laboratory uh, to be able to develop these treatments and these new diagnoses. And that can only happen through funding, and that can only happen through charities like Action Medical Research who are dedicated to provide the funds uh, to be able to do the research that will help the lives uh, of these uh, extremely sick children and to alleviate their suffering and the help the, the, the outcome for them and for their families.